Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. Today we're going to do something a little bit fun. I'm going to look back at my reading experience for the year 2023 and I've come up with a little award ceremony for all the books I've read. Stay tuned. Okay everyone, so I read 104 books in 2023 and I've read it on the top 10 and I've done the most surprising novels uh, for that year. But I thought it would be fun to divide the rest of the books, because I don't want to repeat them, into different categories um, like creepy, disturbing, depressing, uplifting, all that kind of stuff. And give some awards to the remaining 84 books. Although I must admit I've cheated on a few occasions, uh, some of the books that were in my top 10 and in my most surprising books I have mentioned, because what I'm going to do is for each category that I've created, um, I'm going to give two special mentions, I'm not going to talk about them at any length, but I'm going to talk just briefly, just tell you about two books that could have fit the bill, and then I'm going to announce a winner for that particular category and show that book off. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first category that I created is the most depressing books that I've read this year, last year. In other words, that means, and I'm also going to try and give a little bit of an explanation about what each category is. It is the most sad, it is the most bleak, it is the most, most grim um, books that I've actually read this year. Oh, and by the way, I've got a little bit of an audience this time, so if I get a bit of stage fright, um, yeah, I've got family all around me. So I'm just hoping they don't make a noise while I carry on, um, otherwise it's going to be a hell of a lot of editing in this video. But anyway, we're going to come to the most depressing. Um, so these are bleak, grim, sad books, and there are two books. There are two books that uh, nearly made the cut. The first one being, we need to talk about Kevin, which was very grim, um, the subject of the school shooting. Uh, you can't really get much grimmer than that, more depressing than that. And also a surprising one, The Face That Must Die by Ramsey Campbell, which I spoke of earlier, and it's about a serial killer. Um, and we inside his head, and it is a very depressing book. But no more about that. And the winner, the winner goes to uh, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is a difficult read. This is a very, very depressing read. It is sad. Um, and it's set in a post-apocalyptic world where there's seemingly absolutely no hope. Um, like mankind has been wiped out. Um, there's a few survivors, strugglers. But there are just, there's just a little bit of light in this book. And that is this relationship between his father and his son as they struggle across America and they try to get to the coast. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a very sad book. And it's almost like even that little bit of optimism between the relationship between the father and the son. Um, and they have to survive and they have to lean on each other. And their people are trying to do terrible things to them. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's a sad book. Um, and you never know how it's going to end. It's just a sense of pessimism. It's like they are like a light, like flicking a lighter in the darkness and it's overwhelming. And at any time that light might go out. So, yeah, that is Cormac McCarthy, The Road. I still highly recommend this book. Um, it is beautiful, it's beautifully written, very sparse, but it is just such a gorgeous book, um, even though it's just so depressing in places. Uh, so, yeah, The Road. Okay, we're on the second category, the second award is the creepiest book I've read this year. Uh, sorry, we into 24 already, talking about last year. Um, and there were two very close uh, nominees, sort of special mentions. Oh, and by the way, when I talk about creepy, we're not talking about absolutely balls to the wall, terrifying horror. We're going to come to that later. This is more unsettling, kind of creepy carnival, kind of thing where you're talking about setting and characters and so on that just leave you with a little bit of like a, you know, that flesh crawling sensation. Um, 
and there are lots of creepy books that I've read this year. Uh, two that were excellent were Clowns, Inf Clown Infestation by Sven Kamrath. It's just a very short little extreme horror no novella with clowns that are pests that sort of come to life and do nasty things. But yeah, it's very creepy and it's dark. And the next one is The Prettiest Girl in the Grave by Christopher Triani. Um, I love Christopher Triani, um, but this book wasn't quite as good as the other book I read this year but it still takes place in a graveyard and it's about these goth girls that go under the graveyard into this crypt and play this deadly game uh, so it was very very creepy but the winner goes to The Pilo Family Circus by Will Elliot and now this book was phenomenal so much fun uh, first of all the creepy carnival setting somewhere between heaven and hell um, this carnival takes place and it's just a weird assortment of characters um, you've got these psychotic clowns you've got uh, these acrobats you've got this freak show and all these and this, uh, oh, it's just a phenomenal story um, very 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 weird and it goes to very very strange places and yeah I just this was probably the creepiest book that I've read all year so that is the Apollo Family Circus. Okay, the third category I created just for fun was the most disturbing book I've read this year. Now this is different from the most distressing. Uh, these are the books that caused me the most anxiety. It stuck with me for reasons that like, kind of the books that you really stick in your mind that you can't sleep afterwards. Um, some of the graphic nature. And it's not only graphic, but just some of the stuff just really worries you, really troubles you. Um, and the three books, first of all, Ten Days of Flesh by Augustina Bastarecki. Well, it's a book about where cannibalism becomes legal. I'm not going to say more about that. That was freaking disturbing. Second book, and this might raise some eyebrows, uh, that is Lost Souls by Poppy Z. Bright. I found parts of this very disturbing because there were two particular vampires that were very sadistic and very twisted and very sick. And some of the violence of a sexual nature, um, just shared bodily fluids and blood and semen and all sorts of crap. It's very, very graphic and it kind of disturbed me. Um, and yes, there are more extreme books that I'm going to mention later, so stay tuned. But for me, the most disturbing book that I read this year was American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. Not just for the fact that there are some of the most demented uh, sexual violence scenes that I've ever written about sorry, ever read about in any book um, and that kept me awake and it disturbed me to the point where my wife was actually worried. Um, this is the only book that's done this this year. Um, but it's also a descent into madness and it also takes a look at a life that is out of control and a world that is, you don't actually know what's happening, what's real and what's not real because you're seeing through everything through Patrick Bateman's eyes and he's very unreliable and that puts you, doesn't put you at ease. But anyway, the main thing is when the violence starts ramping up in this book, and there's so many trigger warnings, it is deeply disturbing. Um, and it's stuck with me, and I don't know if I can say I enjoyed it. Um, some of the sexual violence in particular is just so over the top and so disgusting that, yeah, it, it kind of it didn't give a good feeling inside. It really disturbed me. Uh, so yeah, that's American Psycho. Okay, the next category is a fun one, and that's the most entertaining book I've read this year. I remember we're talking horror here, so horror entertaining. Not light, not fun. But anyway, the first one, Haunted Forest Tour by James Moyer and Jeff Strand. It's kind of a combined effort. And that was a hell of a lot of fun uh, about these tours into this forest full of creatures. Very gory, very fun. Not going into these in detail, as you can see, but yeah, they were, that's fun. Uh, second one, second nominee was uh, To the Vanishing Point by Alan Dean Foster. Just a gorgeous blend of fantasy and science fiction and horror. And it takes you to very weird places. And it's just a thrill ride. I really enjoyed it. But the winner is Joe R. Lansdale, The Drive-In. Now, this book is very dark. It's very graphic, kind of very extreme in areas, 
But it's so much fun and it had me laughing in areas where I really found that I shouldn't be laughing um, at some of the violence, at some of the stuff that was depicted in this book. But just very quickly what it's about. It's about the uh, biggest uh, driving in the world in Texas and inexplicably it gets covered by this dome. Stephen King, the dome anyone? Anyway, it's covered by this dome. So all the people inside the drive-in, thousands and thousands of people are cut off from the outside world. And food runs out. And yeah, what starts off as normal human behavior in that kind of situation, just spirals out of control. Um, and there's some very sick stuff that happens in this book. And I'm sorry, I laughed. Um, and I shouldn't have laughed, but the way Joe R. Lansdale writes horror, and the way he writes full stop, he brings a sick, black, twisted humor into his stories um, that I just can't help myself. Um, just a very clever, intelligent writer, and I love this book. And I'm definitely going to read the sequel soon, uh, possibly this year or next year. So that is The Drive-In. Okay, for my fifth prize, I needed to fit this in. So I've read quite a few classic books. So I've simply labelled it Best Classic, and I've cheated a bit with the winner, but let's get there just now. Uh, the first play, uh, first uh, runner-up is The Wendigo by Algernon Blackwood. I absolutely love Algernon Blackwood, both books that I've read by him, by him so far. I haven't mentioned the other one because that's in my top ten, uh, but The Wendigo was a lot of fun. And I read it as part of the crypto, cryptoid, whatever read that I did this year, uh, last year. And then also The Devil Rides Out by Dennis Wheatley, um, which is an awesome, awesome book. That is kind of an occult horror, and it's just a hell of a lot of fun. I, mean, I don't know how many would call it a classic, but yes, it's an old book, so I'm going to call it a classic. But the winner is an absolute cheat, and I'm sorry, I'm going to cheat here. This is not a classic. It's a classic retelling. It's a classic mishmash, and that is Jane Slayer by... Uh, Charlotte Bronte and Sherry Browning Irwin. Now this was just so much fun. Um, and you take the original story of Jane Eyre, which by the way is a five star read for me. Don't get me wrong, when I read that at university, I loved Jane Eyre. Um, but this is everything about Jane Eyre. But you just add some vampires, you add some zombies. It's a werewolf or two. And you just got this kick-ass female character, one of my favorite characters of the year, Jane Slayer. Just so awesome. And yeah, so that's wins an award for best classic for me this year. Okay, the sixth category is an interesting one. Um, I decided to come up with my most thoughtful, thought-provoking horror, or thought-provoking read of the year. Um, the two runners-up are, first of all, Bag of Bones by Stephen King. Ah, it's a horror story, horror ghost story, um, with many, many layers, and just a very interesting story, looking back at family history, all sorts of things that kind of intertwine, and with a very enjoyable read. Second one being Handling the Undead by John Lindquist. Um, now that I read at the beginning of the year, I think I mentioned it recently though, um, and it's a zombie story unlike any zombie story you've ever read before. Um, and it just had such an interesting twist on the horrors, on the zombie genre. And it goes to very weird places. Uh, it's kind of psychokinetic. It goes to very strange places. And I need to give it a reread. Um, because on my first read, I only gave it three stars. But I think it deserves another look. Because I've been thinking about it. Um, so, yeah, those are the two runners up. And I'm cheating here because this was on my top 10 most surprising novels of all time, so I'm cheating, but I have to mention it. And that is The Shrinking Man by Richard Matheson. Now this particular novel just blew me away. It's so much more than a little man fighting a spider. It's just so much more to it than that. Um, and it's basically what, what happens if you start shrinking. A grown man, you're married, you've got a child, you've got a job, you've got a life, you've got everything. And what happens if you start shrinking a little bit at a time and there's nothing you can do to stop it? There's no, there's no, there's no cure. You've been to the doctors, you've been to hospital, you've been everywhere. There's nothing you can do to stop what's happening to you. And this strips him of his life, of his manhood. Very important theme in this book. It strips him of his life, his manhood, of his marriage, of his child. Uh, he ends up as just 
it, it, is, it is heartbreaking, it is thought-provoking, it is powerful, it's moving, and it's also a tale about fighting a spider. So you've got both those next to each other, um, and I highly recommend this. And in fact, uh, if you enjoy, um, no, I've started reading Richard Matheson this year. Um, no, I had read one by him before, um, and that was a zombie one, I'm not going to think what it's called now, the Apocalypse one, but the ones I've read by him this year, I just highly recommend him as an author um, and give him a go. But this has been my favourite, The Shrinking Man. Okay people, the next category I'm not going to spend too long on because I don't like to talk too negatively on my channel, but I have to go there. I have to talk about the worst books that I've read this year. And so here are the three books. Um, and now these are just the books that I struggled to get through. These are not DNFs. Um, I would actually say that the books I DNF'd are the worst books. But these are, these are books I managed to finish. So they have some redeeming qualities. Um, they're not all that bad. And in fact, if you go on Goodreads, you might find a lot better reviews than mine. Um, and I don't review any book less than two stars. If it's a one star, I DNF it. Um, but there are three nominees. Uh, the two runners up are Connie by Ash Eric Sorry, didn't care for it. Uh, a very short extreme novella about a uh, horror carnival. And it gets very gruesome, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, first bit is promising, and then the survivors get caught off somewhere and it just becomes, well, extreme, but kind of pointless to me. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't care for it. Uh, so I got two stars. And then Lair of the White Worm by Bram Stoker, for me, was just a big mess. Um, the story, a lot of it didn't make sense. There were a few moments here and there, but for most, it's, for most of it, it's just a mess. Oh, and it's also racist as hell, to be honest. Um, it really shows his colours in this particular book. But uh, that's okay. Let's not go there. But I just did not enjoy that story. And after Dracula, which I thoroughly enjoyed, absolute classic, Avoid the lair of the white worm. But the winner for me goes to Alligator by what's it, Shelly Cats. No, the main reason this is a winner. Okay, I didn't enjoy the writing, I did not enjoy the characters, I thought they were unlikable, in fact, they were hateful, you couldn't stand the characters. A lot of the story just dragged on. The biggest problem I had with this book is if you look at this cover, I kept asking myself where the hell is the alligator? Where's the alligator action? I didn't see any. Okay, you see some at the beginning, sort of a little bit at the end, but this this cover is so deceiving in terms of what you get in the story. Um, and yeah, I just didn't enjoy the story. Two stars, worst book of the year for me. Alligator. Okay, the eighth category is the weirdest book of the year. Now, I've read plenty of weird books this, this year. Um, sorry, in 2023, and in particular for the Week of Weird, hosted by uh, Jason at Jason Weird's Read and a number of others. In fact, I might even link that down below. Um, but yeah, I read some very strange books this year. Uh, I keep saying this year. It's January, last year, 2023. Um, okay, the two runners up are Purdy Doe Street Station, mainly because I mentioned already it's such a huge surprise, otherwise it might well have won this award. That's by China Mabel, and then The Ha by David Sodegren. Uh, that's a fantastical book. Um, it's a very strange creature that comes in from the ocean. That helps this very old woman um, with these property developers who are putting her. I don't know anything else. I've given a review of this, but they are both very weird stories. But for me, the winner, and was a five-star read for me, is a little uh, horror novella called Sour Candy. By Keelan Patrick Burke. Uh, my first experience of this author and definitely not my last. And it just starts with this kind of creepy kid premise. And sort of, uh, this, I'm not going to go into spoiler territory, but uh, yeah, this child doesn't really belong to this father. It's not what, who this child is. It's really messed up. It goes to really twisted places. In fact, it goes to some very dark, Lovecraftian, terrifying places in this book where I was sitting back like going, what the hell is going on in this book? Uh, it's absolutely fantastic read. And so for me, yes, it is the 
Not creepiest, the weirdest book I've read this year. Okay people, in my ninth category, uh, now this is not my worst book of the year. These are not my worst books. These are my most disappointing books of the year. And let me just explain what that means. That means these are books that were good books, but that at, I had a huge, huge kind of passion to read beforehand because they had so much hype and everyone was saying they're so good and then they just let me down um, and they weren't terrible must have been three stars but yeah I was I was just let down because my expectations were so high um, so that's what I consider disappointing um, you go in with five star expectations and you come away with oh uh, yeah that was a good story it was okay it was good but Hell, I don't know what everyone's talking about. Um, so the two runners up are The Collector by John Fowles, although maybe that's not as surprising. Even though it's a classic, this guy goes to collect women, he collects a woman. Uh, the first half of the story is told from his perspective, and he's a bit of a psychopath, sociopath, whatever. And he doesn't harm her, but he thinks that the longer he keeps her, she's going to love him. Um, and I like the first half of the story. Went into the second half of the novel and it's from her perspective, uh, her arty friends and all sorts and I just didn't buy it, I'm sorry, I couldn't get into it. Uh, so yeah, I think it was a three star for me, but disappointing. Um, the second one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Everyone was telling me how awesome this book is, but I couldn't stand the character Frankenstein and what he did to the monster, but yeah, he was just an annoying arsehole. Frankenstein was just an annoying prat. He treated, ah, and anything, anytime anything went against him, he would like start crying, go to bed, not wake up for two weeks or two days, whatever. I just did not enjoy him as a character, and he just brought the whole tone of the story down for me. Um, perhaps I need to give it a different read at some start, at some stage, maybe give it a reread. But yeah, the character let it down for me. Um, that's Frankenstein. But the winner is. Nick Cutter, The Troop. Um, now I read this towards the beginning of the year. Everyone, including Stephen King, was raving about it. Stephen King says, A troop scared the hell out of me. And I couldn't put it down. This is old school horror at its best. So, if Mr. King is going to say something like that, surely then, surely, I would enjoy a book like this. Um, and everyone in Booktube was raving about this book. When I actually read it, not a bad story, but I found the body horror, and there's plenty of body horror about this virus then. But there's plenty of body horror, but it's repetitive and just gratuitous, and it never ends. And in a way, the book is also, you can kind of see what's happening next. Because it takes place on this island, okay, there are some moments towards the end that are pretty awesome. But I just found the repetitive nature of the body horror over and over again, just not to my liking. Um, so... Instead of a five star read, this became a three star read for me. That is the truth. Okay everyone, before we get to our 10th genre or 10th uh, award, you can see that everything has changed. Uh, we didn't realize the camera battery had run out. So it's a little bit late at night. So we're going to do uh, our final one right now. And the final award is for the most terrifying book I've read in 2023. And I'm cheating a little bit here because I'm giving my book of the year, which is Terror by Dan Simmons. I'm not going to talk about that because I mentioned it already. And this is followed by two extreme novels. That scared the freaking crap out of me. And the second one is um, The Black Farm by Elias Wytherow. And I'm reading a sequel next month. Um, this is very well written, um, very fantastical. Just incredible world building, and I really, really enjoyed it. But, the number one book, and this actually probably goes hand in hand with the terror, that's because it absolutely terrified me, it raised my heartbeat, um, it just made me squirm, and it kept me up at night. And this book is freaking terrifying. And that is Jack Ketchum's off-season uh, now, that's only a Jack Ketchum book I've read to date. And it's a very simple tale about a bunch of cannibal, cannibals that have been living for 
a long time in this back end of the woods, whatever, and some out of towners that come there. The story is very simple, they clash. Um, what sets it apart from something that's just purely grotesque and gory and sick and disgusting is the writing and the pacing and the storytelling. It is exciting, it's thrilling. And really, I couldn't put the book down. Um, it's just so terrifying. And it's so much more than just basically these cannibals gorging themselves on these, these tourists. Um, it is absolutely shocking and horrifying and terrifying. And it's very easily my book of the year. That is Off Season by Jack Ketchum. Okay everyone, so that's my choices for my award ceremony for the best books of 2023 in different categories. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please be sure to leave a comment down in the spaces below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to a good 2024. Um, and I wish you all the best for 2024 as well. And take care of yourselves. Keep those pages turning. And cheers.